22nd, 2011. I'm Deb Lawrence, and we're here with the current mayor, Jim Fleck, for the Oral History of Whitley County Project. Thank you for being here. Well, it's good to be here. Yeah. Um, so are you a native of Whitley County? Yes, I was born and raised here. Yeah. And uh, then I went away for a period of eight years, if you call that, when I was in college, mm -hmm. and, uh, law school. Uh, what neighborhood did you grow up in? I grew up on North Main Street. Um, the uh, currently the Pizza King uh, is is um, where my house was. Uh, the you have that's really the parking lot of the Pizza uh -huh. King. So when I become president, uh, you're not going to be able to go find my house. Oh, yeah. that's too and bad. I know that is. That is. <laughs> so what was there before Pizza King was there? Houses. Uh, well, the, the Pizza King actually was a corner. Uh, what we call convenient gas store gas station when I grew up. Uh, the full little grocery store, a corner grocery store, but also a full service station. Really? Uh, and uh, yeah, they not only sold gas, but they repaired cars and um, it was a, it was different then. Yeah, I, I know mm -hmm. most people don't remember that corner without Pizza King. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and so then where did you go to school? I went to school here in Columbia City, um, started, of course, at the West Ward uh, uh, School in kindergarten, and then in fourth grade, the Mary Raber School had just been built, and I was in that school district, so I had my fourth grade at Mary Raber, and uh, we were the first uh, class to, quote, graduate from the fourth grade at Mary Raber. Since then, I think that, that they've adjusted what, what's there, and and who goes there, but uh, then we went back to uh, the West Ward, finished elementary school there, and my first year was at the high school, which was attached to um, the, the West Ward, and uh, that was uh, the uh, first year that all of the students came in for consolidation. Um, that's the country schools, the mm -hmm. Washington Township, Jefferson, Kowasi, uh, or Union Township, and at the Troy. Um, and um, uh, so it was a great opportunity in high school to uh, to get to meet new friends and uh, also it was, a, it was a first big step in uh, uh, creating a larger community in terms of the Columbia City area and, and Whitley County area um, because now we, we all knew each other. Now, prior to that each Township had their own high school. That's correct. Okay. Uh -huh. And where was West Ward situated? Right, we were attached to the high school. I mean, oh, what? oh, they, it's on Wal North Walnuts or on Walnut Street. I guess it is considered north. Mm -hmm. um, and it presently is being used as a New Tech High School, which just opened uh, a few or this fall. Uh, school started. And so um, that's where, where West Ward was, and uh, it was a, a K through eight. Um, we didn't have a junior high, mm -hmm. and then we, you went right into four years of high school. Okay. So what, what kind of things did you do in high school? Did you play, did, was there a, a basketball, uh, yeah, football yeah, team? Yeah, I was and... one of these kids. Well, in, in the eighth grade, I had always been very active in sports. In the eighth grade, I, I uh, injured uh, myself. I injured my knee, tore my knee apart, and also uh, got a, a growth disease called Osgood Slaughter's disease, where the knee bones separate, and you have to. And so I had to lay out the year. Well, I never really was a, a star athlete, so I was marginal at best, and um, so I didn't uh, couldn't do football. They wouldn't let me do football, and of course in basketball. Uh, I, as I said, I was marginal, and uh, two years in a row, I was the last one they cut from the team. And uh, those, of course, are, are growing up pains that you endure, sure. but, but fun. Uh, the, the good news about that was that um, I was uh, able to take up new interests, and that my new interests uh, were um, speech and debate uh, in high school, uh, and I was in choir, and, uh, and of course, drama at that point and uh, we uh, we did very we, we the school at that time was one of the foremost schools in speech and debate matter of fact your your uh, auditorium 
uh, is named after Bob Britton. Well, Bob actually uh, uh, was three years younger than 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 I was, and uh, uh, I even took him back and forth uh, to college. Oh. Uh, so, um, but we were very good at that time, and uh, we, we were able to win the state debate on several occasions, and also. Um, I went to the Nationals, uh, and uh, that was, the, you know, those were great experiences. Sure, sure. So, uh, Who was your coach at that time? Well, I, we actually I had a, a gentleman by the name of Forrest Fruits, um, and he uh, was, until my senior year, our, our debate and speech coach. Then he moved on down to Indianapolis, where uh, he was... Uh, a speech and debate coach there for a period of time at North Central High School. In our senior year, uh, we had a, I, you know, I don't even remember the man's name because he was kind of a permanent substitute teacher. Uh, <laughs> and um, so as a seniors, we were pretty much uh, uh, self-taught, but that was fun. Oh, sure, sure. <clears throat> do, you, do you have any memorable teachers? Oh, um, well, quite a few, really. I mean, we we uh, were very fortunate uh, in that era to have uh, teachers uh, who were very, very dedicated uh, to to what they did. It isn't that we don't today, but mm -hmm. but um, uh, Bernice Carver uh, was an outstanding teacher. Although I only had her in two different classes uh, in high school. Uh, a fellow by the name of Ford Fleck, uh, who is related, was related to me, or I was related to him, mm -hmm. but not as close as what people thought. Uh, uh, he was the first cousin to my father, and so uh, that would have made, uh, made us uh, second cousins or first cousins once removed, mm -hmm. or something like that. I'm not sure how that's called. Um, and he taught science. He taught uh, chemistry and physics and um, it taught us an awful lot about life and, uh, and how, to, how to deal with uh, uh, stressful situations. And so I enjoyed that. Uh, um, I, I enjoyed a lady by the name of Lois Waller, uh, who was my Latin teacher and English teacher. And um, she, was, she didn't stand very tall, but uh, she, uh, uh, she, she, when she spoke, people listened. And uh, so I, I did enjoy that as well. Um, other teachers were, of course, numerous, but in but those are the ones that's standing out right now. Did you ever get in trouble in school? Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, and that was another good teacher that did that. I mean, it wasn't like, uh, uh, and I just happened to forget it. It was Irene Shaw. Irene Shaw uh, was absolutely fabulous, but she had the strictest rules, and um, I. Uh, I was considered absent-minded in those days, uh, and uh, uh, actually had her for what was called homeroom, or or uh, we had her as a, in a study hall, in effect. And uh, I was studying, but I didn't realize I was also humming, <laughs> um, and uh, probably fairly loud. And she and she she told me to quit. Well, I thought I had. Well, I guess I hadn't. <laughs> and, and so. Uh, I did. I got in trouble, and <clears throat> she went she to put me in a location. I didn't like the location where she put me, so I left. Well, that proceeded to get me in a lot more trouble, and I, I kind of, I think I got sent uh, sent home, as I recall, and uh, then had to figure out a way to get back in school. So it was an interesting time. But yeah. So, what kind of things did you do after school? What was up uptown <coughs> or downtown? <coughs> As it well, um, I I worked after school. Uh, I actually uh, I worked well from the time I was ten years old until uh, just about now. Uh, mm -hmm. I, some people wonder if I work at all now, but <laughs> I I do, and uh, of all sorts of jobs, uh, paper routes. Uh, that's where I got to really know a lot about the city because mm -hmm. I, I would throw an awful lot of papers on people's roofs oh. and, uh, and so yeah, that's what and then you would uh, have to collect uh, for the paper every mm -hmm. Saturday and uh, that was always a good experience interesting experience you got to know people then 
I worked um, in a uh, hardware store. There used to be a hardware store downtown. This uh, actually, uh, a fellow by the name of um, Inky Giles uh, was the proprietor. And uh, right next door was a uh, was a uh, pharmacy or drug store, mm -hmm. and um, he would my first task every every day was to go over and get him a cup of coffee. Um, so counted an awful lot of screws and nuts uh, mm -hmm. for inventory, and um, just was kind of a kind of the uh, gopher um, mm -hmm. in, in that job. Then worked at a grocery store. Um, uh, Mike Williams at Williams Supermarket, uh, which uh, uh, now is a farmer's supply, but before that he lives across the street in, mm -hmm. in the auto parts store. Um, and um, learned, again, all those jobs taught me a, a heck of a lot as, as I grew up and as I um, saved so I could go to college. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, which was good. My my family, uh, we we never knew we didn't have money, um, and uh, that was okay. Um, but we never did have much money, and my folks uh, taught me to always. Uh, it was very important to save. And, different uh, different so times, because yeah, it, it was. A, a lot of us didn't know we didn't have money. We yeah yeah, and actually we we had a lot more than that. We had. Um, we just had a great family, a very connected family, an extended family, where uh, my uh, uh, aunts and uncles and, and cousins. Uh, we actually grew up as a as a as a very tight knit family. We would get together on most weekends, um, and I just thought that's the way it was. Was you know for us that is the way it was here in Columbia City. Right. Um, so. Uh, very fortunate, very fortunate to have that experience and uh, as we then got into high school, as you asked, uh, I spent an awful lot of time between working and speech and debate. Speech and debate, you started, in fact it never ended. You'd, you'd go places in the summer to different colleges and universities uh, where, where we'd spend uh, a couple of nights uh, uh, at the university, would, would spend the day in a good part of it in the library, researching. Um, that gave me an opportunity to see what college was about because sure. I had never really, really knew. Uh, and uh, that was fun. That was, those were memories. Those are great memories. Mm -hmm. And uh, I imagine that it still is the way you have to approach uh, speech and debate. We have been very fortunate here. Uh, well, we've always had a good speech and debate yeah. program. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm uh, just, uh, uh, again, one of the things that Columbia City has offered that kind of hasn't been recognized fully. Uh, and then, of course, we were fortunate to have a gentleman by name, Bob Britton, who uh, came back to Columbia City, taught, uh, and then, of course, devoted his life to, to students in, in the forensics. Uh, and. Uh, and nationally, was was a, uh, very well recognized uh, as a as a very superior uh, coach and mentor of youth. And he loved what he did. Yes, he did. So, kind of take us up. Well, it's not Main Street; it's Van Buren Street. But kind of take us up Van Buren Street. What what was there then that's not now? Well. <laughs> All the buildings, uh, well, not all the buildings, but most of the buildings were there. Uh, and uh, as we as we come up, uh, starting from the east, uh, as you come up and at the corner of, of uh, Washington Street in Van Buren, was a funeral home, mm -hmm. and it was a uh, uh, Demoni funeral home, and. Uh, a fellow by the name of Jesse Demoni owned it uh, with his son, Robert Demoni, and uh, very ornate, very beautiful, very characteristic of the mid-1800s. Uh, they had maintained that uh, uh, type of uh, uh, decor. And uh, that, of course, uh, uh, 
met its demise when they had a fire. I remember the night, but yeah. everybody was sad. Yeah, and um, it was it was really a, a, a show place, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we lost that. And uh, there were a couple houses uh, then as as we moved moved uh, west on Van Buren Street, and uh, then uh, we. We had the alley, and that began the uh, that began the quote downtown. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, on the corner, on the corner was a bank. It's called Citizens State Bank, and uh, not not where Star Bank is today, but across the street. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it was uh, of the old vintage. Uh, walk in the lobby, everybody would say hi to you. Tellers were behind the, uh, the uh, uh, little, uh, uh, not desk, but a, a counter, and uh, and they knew you. And, uh, you know, you just did old-fashioned banking, and the bank uh, president sat out in the middle, and, uh, uh, and his assistant, and uh, things were, uh, uh, when you banked, I banked there because my uncle uh, worked there, and uh, he was president of that bank, and uh, so everybody kind of knew me, and I go in, and I could we'd be able to just say hi to him, visit, sit down, and just kind of take in the the. Uh, uh, I absorbed a lot of stuff at sure. that point, not not really knowing what it was that I was I was seeing, but um, very very. Uh, this when farmers came to town on the weekends. And so it was a, a pretty big center. And they point. were actually open on Saturday. Oh yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> they were actually open on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, they sure were. And everybody wore a tie. Everybody had a tie mm -hmm. and a suit. Oh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, vests. Uh, vests were a big thing, and, uh, and that's what they they wore. Of course, uh, uh, as a kid, I wore jeans and a t-shirt. Sure. No different than any, anyone else. Um, across the street was a theater where the Star Bank is now, mm -hmm. and uh, it was called the Columbia Theater, and actually it was a pretty famous theater, and we had had several uh, people who went to Hollywood uh, from here, and uh, we had a couple premieres uh, where uh, we actually, that was the first showing of those movies. Wow. I'm not sure, but I think the, the movie The Robe was was uh, mm -hmm. actually uh, premiered here. That's my memory. But it, it, we had to, on Saturday, <clears throat> they always had kids shows. I mean, those were the and you had an afternoon matinee, and mm -hmm. an awful lot of the kids would take uh, their quarter because uh, it cost 16 cents to get in the in, in wow the movie. <laughs> and uh, actually, my mother would give me another penny. And uh, the, the combination, 26 cents, bought me a movie ticket, and popcorn, and a pop. Wow. And uh, <laughs> so I was in heaven and uh, saw an awful lot of B-Westerns. Um, uh, that was a big thing, B-Westerns. Uh, and uh, so um, we had that. We had several, uh, we had several clothing stores mm -hmm. downtown that, that joined. Uh, but in between, and this was a little later on, and I'm not certain when, but it was in the late 40s, a little shop, <coughs> no bigger than a, than a closet, but longer than a closet, mm -hmm. um, appeared where it was called the Nook. And uh, a, na a lady by the name of uh, Am uh, Mamie Weary, started this, or opened this, and uh, it evolved into what's called the Nook Hot Dog Restaurant, mm -hmm. which was later moved on down the street. But at that, that's where the snack shop was. Uh -huh. But you could get a hot dog uh, uh, there, and uh, of course the candies and the popcorn. Mm -hmm. and uh, But it was just, a, and that's probably where it got to be known as the uh, the nook because it was a because nook it and was cranny. so little yeah um, and uh, so uh, we there was a uh, women a couple of women's stores uh, uh, I, 
didn't go there very often. Yeah, probably not. No. I think only when my mother, when it was Christmas time, and I had to figure out what to get my mother. <laughs> um, but uh, a couple grocery stores uh, right downtown. Right downtown. Right. Yeah, and uh, those stores. Um, uh, when on Saturday again, Saturday night was a big thing in Columbia City, and uh, you would go downtown, uh, get in the car, family, go downtown, put a blanket out on the courthouse lawn, and you sit around and talk because uh, the, the, your relatives that lived out in the country would come to town, and uh, the kids would just run around all over the, the, the down town area or primarily on the courthouse lawn and uh, the adults would either go sh their grocery shopping and then put them back in their, mm -hmm. in their car and let the groceries in the car and then chat some more and uh, the, the uh, older gentleman would sneak off to a, a, a little uh, establishment called the Stag which was a bar mm -hmm. pool hall and uh, then they'd reappear after a while when uh, I I never really even knew why of course, they went there to get their little nip, uh, but uh, um, we had some men's stores downtown, uh, two of them, uh, as I recall. No electronic stores. Electronic stores were, there wasn't anything mm -hmm. called electronics. But we had a, uh, we, we had two, uh, what do they call them, five and ten cent stores, or dime stores. Mm -hmm. One was a Schultz dime store, which was big. That's where ball furniture is today, and then then on down the street was a, the one that was on the corner of uh, Van Buren and Line, which was called Roffers, and Roffers was was their competitor. It, it, it was a very early version of what you would call a Walmart. Uh -huh. uh, they had a, a whole variety of, of, of things, or maybe a family general store mm -hmm. uh, uh, now. Um, it was usually, you know, less expensive product, but a lot of toys. Uh, you had um, bicycles, you had uh, uh, f flowers, you had a big candy counter, you had, uh, again, smaller items, uh, like a general store, mm -hmm. um, in both of those. And it was just it was really fun. The downtown was, was a, a, an interesting place and uh, very active, very active and uh, uh, we, we had other businesses that were, that were there. We had a second theater uh, in, in uh, Columbia City. Oh really? Uh, yeah and uh, that primarily only showed westerns and adventure shows uh, like Tarzan and uh, Jungle Jim and uh, you had uh, I can remember seeing Lash LaRue, all these famous Westerners, Hoblong Cassidy, uh, and a lot of double features. Wow! Uh, back then, and it was just a, it was very interesting. Now that one went out first. Mm -hmm. Once once uh, the city was unable to apparently support uh, support that, so we had a couple restaurants on that side of the street. Mm -hmm. uh, as well. Uh, Where was your favorite place to eat? Uh, I liked it. Well, we didn't get it. I didn't have any money, so I didn't get to do that very often. Uh, in fact, uh, it was a real treat. My wife, I'm not my wife, no, my mother um, uh, would allow me maybe once a month to eat lunch, a school lunch, at a place called uh, uh, the Innocent restaurant which was a diner uh, and uh, I would always get the same thing I didn't in fact I never knew they had anything else I guess uh, and I and uh, I would eat with with a, a fellow named Rex Schrader who was my cousin and uh, he he uh, ate out a lot uh, there but I would get to go once a month with him and uh, so that was one of, of, the, of the restaurants. You had a restaurant called Black's um, uh, Restaurant, which is uh, uh, on the other side of the street. Um, downtown, uh, we had, a, 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 as I said, we had this, the Stag. We had um, several other bars. 
across the street was a little, what's called a confectionery. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it became, it was the ice cream, little ice cream store. Oh. And uh, it was kind of a hangout for kids. And uh, uh, later on uh, in my childhood, two sisters by the name Walker, uh, who happened to be uh, currently Jeff Walker's cousins, mm -hmm. um, owned it uh, and it ran that. And uh, uh, I love them because of they every uh, day on my paper out, I have to deliver 20 newspapers to that location. Wow! I mean, that's that's a big hit. That's a big stat. That's a yeah. big hit. And uh, uh, so uh, I always liked that, but I. Uh, I contributed a lot to their pinball machine. <laughs> you don't see those anymore. <laughs> um, what what was the paper called at that time? We had two papers. Mm -hmm. One was the Columbia City Post, and the other was the Commercial Mail. And there was a reason for that. Mm -hmm. The state law required that you have <clears throat> two newspapers, and you had to publish legal notices in two different newspapers. Well, they were published at the same place. <laughs> they had, they had uh, everything except the name of the paper was uh, almost everything was the same, exactly the same. But you had two newspapers. And the, the funny thing about that is that uh, uh, the politics of it was that the Commercial Mail was the Republican newspaper and the Columbia City Post was the Democratic newspaper. Uh -huh. And some people, some people, it really made a difference, and if you gave them the wrong newspaper, you'd hear about it. Oh, no. <laughs> and I could never figure that out until I got a little older and realized there are some people who just really, if they're, if they're Republican, they are really Republican, and they don't have anything to do with a Democrat, and there are a lot of Democrats who say the same thing. And so, but it was really kind of an interesting adventure. But it was adventure. pretty yeah. much the same paper, just with a different header. It was the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Uh, and so I had to deliver both mm -hmm. at the same time, uh, same price. Everything was the same. And uh, oh how. But uh, if you got happened to reach in your in your newspaper bag and got the wrong newspaper, you, you you'd hear about. It. <laughs> now Wednesday, you gave me the wrong paper. Oh know, dear. Yeah. It was, kind of, it was just fun. Was Your fun. tip went down the drain. Well, I didn't way. get. You didn't get tips. <laughs> <laughs> so, other than just Columbia City, what all over Whitley County has has become different? A absolutely, we are now much more of a of a uh, an extended community, and we depend upon each other for economic. Growth, economic development, jobs. Um, people uh, tend to do commerce all over a lot more, and uh, we've been able to maintain our independence uh, from from uh, Allen County or Fort Wayne. Although we've experienced significant growth. When I grew up, the community was less than four thousand people. Now we're we're approaching nine thousand, and so it's a much different community and mm -hmm. size. I told you about where the Pizza King is now. Well, mm -hmm. that was the end of Columbia City. Oh, really? That was the end of Columbia City, yeah. Wow. Uh, North Street was Cinders. It was a, basically an alley. And uh, every spring, uh, when you uh, cleaned out your coal furnace, this, you, 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 someone would haul it someplace, so they would crunch the, uh, the cinders. And then uh, that would became the, the topping in this on the street. Wow! And uh, this went on during most of my growing up years. And it was only later that uh, we had growth on uh, on the uh, north side where the Zion Lutheran mm -hmm. Church is, and then on uh, thirty wasn't even wasn't even imagined mm -hmm. at, at that point. Um, nor was anything north of, of North Street. Mm -hmm. So it was a different Columbia City. Uh, the the, the uh, north, immediately north of that on North Street, was a dairy farm and uh, some colonial farms and uh, a rather large dairy. They, they uh, actually uh, 
uh, had the, the farm. They actually then bottled the milk, sold the milk then to grocery stores. Wow. Or you could you could go and buy the milk there, and that's what my one of my jobs at home was. That I mom would send me to the farm, and I'd walk in the big gallon glass jug glass containers across the field through the cows. And you could get either homogenized or pasteurized milk, and uh, uh, then you then you'd make your way. And it's a little tight that those gallons of milk. I'd get two gallons so that I'd be balanced. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, but it was you know a pretty heavy deal going What's back that? home. And uh, but that was that was the Columbia City I grew up in, where the where the current high school is. That was a farm as well. So. There was no Whitley Street. Mm -hmm. uh, again, a, a cinder alley, mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, you, you you had uh, two streets extend, extending to this high school. One was Brownwood Avenue, which was unpaved, and uh, Collinwood Avenue, which was unpaved. And uh, the uh, the street was put in when when the high school was built. Wow. Uh, so. so going the other way out towards like the American Legion, <clears throat> how, how far did the city extend? Well at there? that time in the American or the American Legion, that was thirty. Oh yeah. That was Lincoln Way. Mm -hmm. And so you we had that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in fact one of the drive in restaurants that we had was called Shang's Drive In. And um, I'm really not sure how far out it was actually. I mean, mm -hmm. in today's world, but it seemed like you had to go out into the country to go to this <laughs> driving. And, and of course, I was always fascinated because we had car hops, and those car hops um, were the were the high school girls. Mm -hmm. And when you're little, boy, those high school girls really were pretty. <laughs> and, and it was always exciting to to, to get your uh, sandwich, but or whatever it was you were able to get, and often it was root beer, mm -hmm. and um, uh, that was just a big thing. But those were new; those mm -hmm. were new when me we growing up. So that was a sensation. Oh, sure. It wasn't uh, like a drive-through McDonald's or uh, Arby's or whatever. No, you had a you had a uh, restaurant. Uh, it was driving. Stay in your car. And ate, got ketchup and mustard all over the back seat, and, and you went home. <laughs> and you didn't have to wear a seatbelt. No, that's right. That's right. That's right. So, you know, we're always going to roll around to this part. Tell us about the politics of Whitley County. You know, I, as a kid, I didn't pay much attention to that. Uh, I enjoyed. Uh, uh, the city. I enjoyed what we had to offer. I didn't really think in terms of politics. Um, I grew up, I can remember meeting uh, Lyndon Johnson, who was running for vice president under uh, with uh, John Kennedy. He came to Columbia City. Really? That was the first person I wow. had ever uh, met that was, you know, a politician mm -hmm. that I can remember now. Um, and it was really neat. I got to shake his hand, and uh, I had a, a button, and of course, you know, history, as it, it would unfold, um, uh, you know, they, it was kind of a very memorable experience. Now, I don't recall other, other people at that level mm -hmm. attending or coming here until this last election where uh, former President Kennedy came and then President Obama, uh, Barack Obama, who became president, uh, came to mm -hmm. Columbia City. Uh, I don't recall any other candidates coming here to Whitley County. Now, they would venture into Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. So the national candidates uh, were uh, didn't come to small, mm -hmm. but they didn't have television. They didn't uh, right. weren't able to leverage this small town thing. So they could get national coverage. Um, 
I do remember a fellow by the name of Ed Roush. And now why do I remember Ed Roush? Because he walked his entire congressional district. That was unusual. And he'd start out, and uh, I did get to meet him. I got to talk to him. And he was a, uh, he was a very personable guy. And uh, uh, I did start to get interested at, at that level. Uh, it, so it was a... a it, it was uh, important. We had, uh, of course, Ralph Gates became governor. Uh, I, I knew that, but I didn't know Ralph Gates mm -hmm. until after, well, after he was back home and was practicing law. And uh, uh, I did get to know his family, uh, uh, Robert Gates and then Patricia uh, uh, McNagney, who became judge, and, and uh, Bob. Uh, Gates ran for governor. Now, believe it or not, when Bob Gates ran for governor, and I was a senior, now my family were always Democrats, and Bob was a very strong Republican. I mean, uh, in there were, I, I got to, to learn later again, that it was a big deal, <laughs> the difference. <laughs> and, uh, but I actually worked for Bob when he ran for governor, uh, went to the went to the Republican convention, and that's when when they had all these backroom deals, and it was, and my job was to tally votes. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, again, Rex Schrader and I, who uh, were, were buddies, we we said that we would help them do that. So we spent several days down at that convention um, trying to trying to get him nominated mm -hmm. to become governor. Uh, that so, so that's what my memory is uh, pretty much around around politics. Mm -hmm. Knew a lot of mayors because I worked uh, I worked in a variety of positions as I grew up for the city, mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, I didn't know what that was. I didn't know what they did. Uh, they were my friend, and that's mm -hmm. all I knew. And uh, that was enough. That was enough. <laughs> Very good. So I know you used to sit on the library board. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about? Okay, those adventures. Yeah. Yeah. Well, growing up, of um, I, I, quite frankly, when I was real little, I didn't venture into the library, which was up on North Main Street, next to Smith Funeral Home, um, which is now a parking lot, but. Uh, we had a very, very exciting library uh, called the, the, the Peabody Public Library uh, because Mr. Peabody donated an awful lot of the money. And uh, it was ornate uh, in today's standards, and it had its own characteristics, its own smell. Uh, the lighting was absolutely terrible. Um, uh, and uh, in, on the bottom floor was the, the uh, uh, at one time was a meeting room. They changed it to a, a historical museum. For a while, that's where the Cook County Historical Museum was in the basement of the library. And of course, then over the years, it became several other things. And at one point, then the children's section of the library <clears throat> um, served the community well. It was a Columbia City only supported library. And uh, uh, as we consolidated uh, with the different townships and we became a, became a uh, center for school and things, there were demands that, that it change its characteristics and serve a lot more people. And so uh, it outgrew itself. Uh, in other words, there was actually, we were out of space. Uh, it was a library that was I, I'm not certain uh, when it was built, but it was it was uh, turn of the century, in the 1900s, at least, um, and it would have served its time. And in order to repair it, in order to, to remodel it, in order to make it accommodating for for people who had disabilities, physical disabilities, couldn't do it. Um, and um, so. What do you do? We're really boxed in, don't have any place to grow. Decided that it was time to explore other locations and uh, 
and move the library. It was controversial because people uh, uh, had fallen in love with this picturesque uh, memory of uh, what it was like to go to this library. Um, very, very friendly people uh, uh, who, who were there and uh, just very homey. But uh, um, we were, we were kind of out of step with, with other communities. It's not practical and it anymore. Wasn't, yeah, yeah. It was almost becoming a, a his, historical uh, building mm -hmm. only. Um, so when we, when we, we started uh, uh, determining whether or not we could build a library, it was totally uh, one of those dream things. And uh, we just kept working on it and working on it. And finally, we were able to put together um, the financing and, and convince enough people uh, to, to join in. We had several of the townships who joined the library during that time period. And uh, we went to work in it. It took um, probably, I would say, someplace about five years before we really got it accomplished and, and were able to get this um, facility where we presently sit um, built. Um, lots of steps, lots of uh, challenges to overcome, um, and, um, and we were just fortunate. And when we did build it, one of the biggest obstacles was why did you go to the edge of town? Uh, why didn't you build it more in the center of town? Well, by the time when we got this library built, when we did the demographic study in terms of where people live, we were actually in the center of town. And we continue to be in the center of town today. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's almost amazing that Columbia City has grown sure. to, to that and point. Having a dairy farm it, at the end of... Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> As I said, it's a much different community than it was when I grew up. Uh, and uh, if I can grow to be 100, uh, it will be much different in 100 than it is today. And uh, we continue to change. And that's one of the beauties of our community, is that we have adapted. And we have uh, stayed competitive. Uh, we, we have provided good jobs. We've provided uh, uh, those things that we need to, to make that happen. Uh, and you working here at the library, I'm sure know that uh, the entire services, uh, all the services that we give, uh, are so much greater than what we were able to give back uh, in the in the late uh, '70s, and uh, that that's that's very important. And uh, what the future will bring in terms of of uh, what. The society, what our community needs, what what we need for uh, information, uh, it's going to continue to 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 evolve, and and that's exciting. That that truly is is a is a dream come true for me, and uh, and and I I'm just glad that I had a chance to be a part of that, um, and. Um, before I became mayor, of course, I traveled around uh, yeah. all over the country um, as part of my job consulting libraries and uh, at that point recognizing what a library could be. And uh, so we, we know we come back home and, and see what it was here. Uh, it was almost heartbreaking because you knew that the, you, you, you knew that the people we're not getting what they deserved, and uh, and we needed to change that. And and I think we have now. I, I truly think that we have. And this is um, this is a joy at, at, at this time. And it, as you said, this is all an oral history. So when someone, if they ever dig it out of the archives or wherever or whatever it happens, they're going to say it was like that. <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, it was like that. And that was a. Uh, uh, during the era where you walk to school barefoot uphill both ways, sure. <laughs> and, um, but it, it it truly is a it, it is a uh, a symbol of the way Columbia City has has grown in our community, and I and I 
I'm, I'm proud of that, and, and we get a lot of comments uh, uh, from people out of town, mm -hmm. uh, not only about this library, but about the way that Columbia City has continued to develop and be an attractive, proud community. Uh, it's a very friendly community, and I get comments by the, about that all the time. Which, uh, it, for people, I mean, that may astonish some people who live here. But um, we, we truly are, compared to some other communities. And uh, uh, that's what makes us who we are. And we do care about people. Uh, that is the same way it was when I grew up. That's what that Saturday at the, mm -hmm. uh, was about, uh, Saturday night, when you went out to the courthouse. Sure. Lawn. It was about you cared for people and what we've been able to maintain that spirit and Hopefully we can continue to to, to 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 push that into the future And so when people even though we have a lot of people who didn't grow up here live here now Right that we can incorporate that so we can expand those of us who did can in, incorporate and move out in terms of the people we know but they can also uh, understand those people who have lived here and whose roots run deep here, and uh, uh, so it's a it, it, it's an exciting uh, community. Uh, I, I uh, wish that, uh, quite frankly, that uh, uh, we were able to uh, uh, continue to to to, to uh, move that spirit to a higher level because there are an awful lot of challenges that we're going to be facing. Um, but we have, and my hope is we have the same ingenuity to bring to those challenges as our forefathers did to, to move us to where we are today. And so uh, that's my hope. Uh, and uh, glad to have uh, had the experience. And I guess if, if I get to come do this, Again, I'm saying uh, uh, in another life, uh, I hope that, that that next one is at least as exciting as this one was. Very good. <laughs> well, thank you for being here with us today. Well, thank you. you. Gave us a lot of insight to how Columbia City used to be. Well, it, it, it's, it's... And still is. Adventure. That's right. That's right. So, yeah.